Five years ago, a college student was gunned down in New York City. Two young men were convicted of his murder. But the mother of one of them believed her son was innocent, and she went to extraordinary lengths to try to get him a new trial. 19-year-old college freshman Mark Fisher had a life filled with promise until October 13, 2003. After a night of partying with friends, he was shot to death in Brooklyn, New York. Just who killed the New Jersey teen remained a mystery for two years until a tip led police to alleged gang members Antonio Russo, 19, and 21-year-old John Juca. Both were sentenced to prison terms of 25 years to life for Fisher's murder. If my son was guilty of this crime, then he should be behind bars for life. This is Juca's mother, Doreen Giuliano, who sat in the courtroom every day of her son's trial. If he took someone's life, then he should be behind bars, but he is innocent. The truth will set him free. After the trial, Doreen began digging, trying to get her son's conviction overturned. She looked into jurors' backgrounds and learned one, Jason Allo, may have known her son, a fact Allo never admitted during jury selection. Doreen set out to get Jason Allo to admit he shouldn't have been on the jury. She went undercover, adopted a new identity, and then did something incredible. I decided to use sex appeal. I uh, transformed myself uh, into a younger woman, a blonde. Uh, I lost weight. I wore a push-up bra to attract a juror. Allo took the bait, and Doreen started secretly recording every conversation. She struck Pater when he told her he'd been persuaded by friends to find John Juca guilty. He deceived the judge, the prosecutors, and the defense. And we are joined by Doreen Giuliano. Doreen, good morning. Good morning. What has your son told you about the night of Mark Fisher's murder and what his involvement was? He had no involvement. He had no knowledge whatsoever. Tell us about that night, because you and your husband were out of town, and your son had a party at your house, and reportedly Mark Fisher sat on a piece of furniture which your son thought was disrespectful. That's incorrect. I'm sorry. Tell me the story, then. That did not happen at all. John had no knowledge of that whatsoever. Was Mark you Fisher... You see, the prosecutors had multiple scenarios, and that was just one of them, in what? a weak case. Was Mark Fisher ever in your home? Yes, he was. And did he have any contact with your son? Yes, he did. And what was that contact? The friendly contact. Friendly. So do you think the other young man who has been convicted of this murder is solely responsible? And I'm talking about 19-year-old Antonio Russo. I'm not sure. Who do you think is responsible for the murder? Julie, listen. John was put on trial with contradictory testimony, multiple scenarios. You know, this was political, there was political agendas here. There was, the media was, was reporting speculation as facts. In John's trial, there was a jailhouse snitch, and then ultimately, ultimately, a tainted, grossly unqualified juror. Tell me a little bit about what your son John has told you about that night. Listen. He had no involvement whatsoever. He had an impromptu party and invited some people over. Since he was one of the kids to see Mark Fisher, of course they're going to focus on him. But how do you prove? How do you prove that you were sleeping? How do you prove that? So he told you he was sleeping when the murder happened? Is that Absolutely. Tell me about how you decided to go undercover. Well, I needed to get to the bottom of this. So I decided to transform myself into a younger woman. And hopefully, if this could get John a new trial, we can prove to the judge, the prosecutors, that John is innocent. Tell me about the undertaking. You rented an apartment, had a different name, went to a gym, started losing weight. This took place over how much time where you assumed another identity? Um, several months. And um, yes, I did transform myself because no way on earth was a private investigator who I did hire was going to get close enough to any of the jurors. If you have a man in a suit, well-spoken, how are you going to get close to him? You have to befriend somebody. So how did you do it? 
And why did you target that one juror, Jason Allo? Well, there was a rumor going around that um, Jason Allo knew some friends of John's. So that was one of the reasons why I focused on him. And then how did you approach him? Um, well, I was riding my bike one evening, and his friend whistled at me, and that was the beginning. How would you describe your relationship, your friendship with Jason Allo? Did it ever turn romantic? No, it did not. Um, it was a friendship, and little by little, he began opening up to me and um, confiding into me and telling me things like, um, John was a tall, skinny Jewish kid with glasses, and he proceeded to tell me how he hated Jews, and I was, I was appalled. He told me how his boss wanted to see that kid fry, basically, why? because he was a Jew. I asked him, why? Why? He said, basically, because he was a Jew. I was devastated. What did you do with this information, and what happens now? Well, immediately, I brought it to John's lawyer. And um, what happens now is we're expecting a reply from the district attorney, Charles Hines's office. Um, to get a new trial? Absolutely. Do you know when you will hear word? Well, it's due on the 26th, their reply. The 26th of this month, of February. Correct. And I'm just hoping that they do the right thing here because Jason Allen deceived us all. Juror number eight, Jason Allen deceived us all. In the final seconds, what did this do to your marriage? What did your husband... It put a strain on my marriage. You're still married today? Absolutely. Is your husband glad you went undercover? Oh, yes, all yes, absolutely. I mean, it put a strain. He was reluctant to um, participate, but he knew I was going to do it anyway. He said, you know, you're just going to do it anyway, so I might as well help you. He said, no way on earth do you get in between a mother and her child. Doreen Giuliano, thank you for speaking with us. Okay. And a special thank you to Vanity Fair magazine for use of their photographs.